Okay, let's just quickly look at a couple of examples here. So, and I will do these as individual videos. So this is the one that I had reviewed first. So let's take a look at it. Follow-up follow to families of COVID patients who died at the hospital. Uh, families, grief reactions, and clinical psychologist roles. So again, like this is an example of, um, well, First, let me say that uh, I found all three of these studies by searching COVID space N-U-R-S with a uh, asterisk after it and then grief. Um, so no um, quotation marks around that because I had the uh, asterisk in there so I could get nurses, nurse and nursing um, searched. So that's how I found these individual articles. So looking at this first one, just based on the title, this is actually one that depending upon how they collected data, this actually could be a phenomenological study. It could also be a ethnographic study. Um, it could be a case study because um, at the hospital implies that it's at a specific hospital. And, um, you know, they are looking at specifically families of COVID patients. So you can start to see how you can create some boundaries around the possible individuals that are included in the study. So, um, and, you know, if you're looking at their grief reactions and clinical psychologist roles, if the data was collected in real time, like if the data were, say, recordings of these phone calls and they analyzed what was said during the recording as opposed to say doing interviews with them after the fact then you know that that could be phenomenological uh, that could be data that would be consistent with a phenomenological study so um, you know there's a lot of possibilities here just as I'm looking at the title of things that this could be so let's take a quick look here and um, so I'm going to skim through uh, they say that it is a, um, they don't actually give us a methodology, but they do tell us that multiple qualitative methods, so notice they're using methods there correctly, uh, included written reports and interviews and observations. So the methods of data analysis, or sorry, the methods of data collection were all qualitative in nature. So they use multiple qualitative methods, so that's appropriate. Uh, a thematic analysis was conducted, so their method of data analysis was a thematic analysis. Now, in all honesty, just saying a thematic analysis is kind of like saying, well, I did research. It's a very generic term. Um, I would hope that down in the methodology section that they would give me more specific information here. Like, did they do a constant comparative analysis or did they do a grounded theory analysis or did they do an inductive coding analysis? Like, I'd like to know more about that when I get down there. Um, and so I'm just looking through. I still don't see any naming of a methodology here, so that's fine. So let's go down now and take a look. Um, I'm going to skip all of this because we're not really um, using this today. So I'm not re reading through it like I'd be skimming through for the other ones that um, you know you guys are looking at to see if they are going to be something that's useful to you. Let's assume that I've already sort of made the determination that this is going to be useful to me. Uh, so let's see. Um, so they start talking a little bit about the study here. And let's see, study aim to explore the contents and functions of early psychological follow-ups uh, from the perspective of the clinical psychologist involved in the calls. In particular, it aimed to yada, yada, yada. Uh, the findings are explorative and from a local sample of psychologists working in, ho in a hospital in northern Italy. All right, so they could frame this as a case study because psychologists working in a, in a single hospital in northern Italy is a fairly bounded set. Given the fact that the findings are explorative in nature, it could be more of a descriptive study. And it's interesting because if you remember the list that we had in class, descriptive studies fell under the quantitative um, methodologies that were listed in the, the, uh, in the textbook and in the, the slides, the stuff I found. So this will underscore the fact that 
they described it as a quantitative methodology, and I had said that methodologies are neither quantitative or qualitative, that the methods that were selected are qualitative or quantitative. So, um, you know, the fact that it's exploratory means that it's likely a descriptive study uh, based upon the way in which they're describing it. And they, they say exploratory nature of the study and then cite somebody here. So um, one of the things that I would look to as a methodologist is I would actually scroll down and see what that more uh, 2019 is. So as you can see, designing, so it's from the Handbook of Qualitative Research. So... Um, but it's not like a methodological section, as you can see. And apparently this Morse guy also wrote this mixing qualitative methods um, in an article in the Qualitative Health Research. Um, also, by the looks of it, critical analysis strategies for determining rigor in qualitative inquiry, which actually sounds like would be something that might be useful to you guys from an evaluative standpoint, because... Uh, you know, if you're looking at how do we evaluate quality or how do we evaluate research in general, um, apparently this 2015 article provides an analysis, a critical analysis of strategies for looking at the rigor or the quality, if you will, of qualitative inquiry. So again, that's in the qualitative health research. It looks to be about a 10-page article. So while it's not necessarily germane to our discussion here, it may be one that's worth looking at as, you know, if you are having difficulty de essentially decoding whether or not something is a good qualitative study. So I'm going to go back up here. And you'll notice they spend a fair amount of time. I'm not going to read through all of this in the video. I've already read through it once myself. But, you know, you start the methods on page three. And I would have preferred they call that methodology. But that's me just being uh, quibbling because then they go in and talk about, um, you know, the intervention and the data collection methods. And then they go talk about the data analysis methods. So I would have preferred that to be called methodology. But page four here is all about the methodology, page five is all about the methodology. Um, heck, even the first half up here of page six is about the methodology. So really, you've got roughly three full pages. Yeah, because that's about the amount there that's on page six. Um, three full pages describing the methodology. And if you go through, they do a pretty good job. You know, there's a couple of paragraphs here that tell you about the nature of the institution. Apparently, it's a, a hospital in Milan, um, and they tell you a little bit about, you know, the area it serves and um, the type of patients that they were, you know, that those individuals would have been dealing with. They go through and describe the specific intervention that is going in fairly, a fair degree of detail to the point that, and this is sort of the nature that I always use, if I wanted to replicate this study in my own context, is there roughly enough detail here that I think I could do a pretty good job of it with a degree of fidelity that the authors would be happy with? If the answer is yes, then they've probably done a good job in here. All right, so they've given me a lot of information about the initial phone call. Then they look at the written doc, you know, they tell me about the written documentation that the psychologists need to do. They tell, describe how they did the interviews. Um, so with people at least 10 calls, it was done using Zoom. It was a purposeful sample. So you can see, you know, they tell me all about who was interviewed and that was semi-structured. And here's some of the things that they talked about. So you can see how detailed they are in terms of telling me what it was all about. Um, you know, the observations with the peer discussion groups that they had, they go through and provide a fair amount of information about the um data analysis. And remember, I was complaining earlier about how they just said thematic analysis. Well, now they're telling me a little bit more about it. So you can see they're using an inductive approach. Um, they're specifically following the principles that these two guys or these two individuals laid out. And then they sort of describe how they went about it. You know, here's the first step, the second step, and then a third step or final step, if you will. You know, so again, providing that level of detail that would allow, if you had access to their raw data, you could probably replicate what they've described here. They talk about reliability and validity, uh, which is something you'll see often mentioned in quant qualitative uh, or studies that use qualitative methods, which is always something I like to see. Um, and, you know, so as I look through this and as you read through this, 
Again, asking yourself, is it at a level of detail that I think I could do what they did in my own setting and be pretty close to you know, replicating what they did? If the answer is yes, then chances are they have done a really good job in the way in which they've described this. Um, so the study was fairly well executed um, and fairly well described to you as a reader. So those are the kinds of things that I'm looking for when I'm reviewing a qualitative article. So in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm looking for in a quantitative article.